Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome to the lecture 26. Um, this is the, uh, the last class, the last lecture of this class, C230 of this semester. Um, in this class, we're going to talk about triaxial shear test and triaxial shear strength of soil. So determination of shear strength parameters of soil. Um, in the Moklum shear strength criteria, we've seen um, two parameters, which is uh, one is the cohesion intercept, C, and B, the friction angle, the other one. And depending on the drainage condition, if we use the total stress, we're going to talk about this one later soon, but uh, if we use the total stress to get the CMP, we just use the CMP without the prime. And if we use the effective stress terms to get the C pro CMP, then the, we use the C prime and V prime. So to determine the shear strength, laboratory, laboratory tests can be performed using the uh, representative on these top samples, or you can perform field tests. Um, most commonly used tests are direct shear tests that we did in the last class and try shear shear test that we're gonna do it today. We're gonna uh, discuss. And uh, in the field, uh, you, there are a variety of testing method. Um, Fain shear tests are popular, pop, uh, is popularly used, also four cone and pressure meter and uh, static cone penetrometer test and standard pre uh, pre penetration test, SPT. In the laboratory test, uh, we, using the, uh, uh, the lab test, the, through the lab test, we want to simulate the field condition. Uh, so when you imagine a representative soil sample that's uh, buried at a depth of interest, C, then this soil sample is under a stress, the vertical confining stress and the horizontal confining stress. And when the when a structure any structure is built on this ground surface, then this will add the additional total stress increment right? apply, which is delta sigma expressed here. Um, so then after the and during construction, this delta sigma will increase, and that can. Uh, enlarge and increase the size of the mole circle. And at some point, it's going to touch the uh, mole column shear strength criteria envelope. So simulating the field condition in the lab laboratory, uh, you take the sample and take it to the lab. And then you place it under a confining stress that represents the uh, field condition. Okay. So sigma H and uh, sigma B. Set the specimen in the apparatus and apply the initial stress condition. And step two, and in, if you perform a threshold test, then you apply the delta sigma, the deviatory loading, until it fails. If you perform a directional test, the vertical confining stress you only apply for as an initial con condition, and then you apply the she shear force to shear it. So um, in this class, we're going to focus on the triaxial shear test. And shear, uh, triaxial shear testing apparatus uh, is appear, uh, appears in this slide. You can see uh, the soil sample is jacketed with a membrane, impervious membrane here, which is a kind of a rubber membrane and that separates the uh, pore fluid from the outside the, the fluid outside the soil specimen and this o-ring gives a perfect seal so that the uh, the water doesn't go in outside or the air doesn't go in so there's no leakage in uh, between this there um, and once the soil sample is placed and jacketed like this and then you apply the confining stress with the water or air. So you can apply 
some stress, which is called the confining stress or confining pressure or cell pressure. And once the confining stress is applied and the soil sample is stabilized, maybe consolidated or um, just stressed, then you apply the deviatric stress using this piston. And you increase this deviatric stress until the soil fails. And during the um, deviatric stress application, you can measure the uh, pore water coming in and out, right, through this port. So then you can measure the uh, volume change of the soil specimen, whether when the, uh, the water, pore water is coming out, then the soil gets, you know, shrinked, so it contracts, so that you can also measure the volume contraction because the solid volume inside does not change. Yeah? Um, if it withdraw some water, then it means that it's expanding, right? So by looking at uh, and monitoring the, uh, the water level change, when you have a period like this, then you can look at the water level change going up and down, then you can monitor the volume change. And if, on the other case, if you shut the, this pore fluid line with the valve, then just measuring the pressure here, so you install a pressure gauge here and then looking at the pore pressure change, then also you can monitor the pore pressure, internal pore pressure change during the deviatric shearing. Um, so it will show some failure plane like this when it uh, fails or it can be just purged. Huh? So it's depending on the specimen type. So this slide shows the, uh, the whole equipment and operator setup. And the one at the, the very right side is the one that you look at to monitor the volume change. So this line is the pore fluid line and the water goes in and out. And you're looking at the, the, you know, the level, water level, then you can monitor the volume. Or if you shut the valve here, then you're looking at the uh, pore pressure change, and then you can monitor the pore pressure change during the shearing. And here, this indicates the force, and this indicates the vertical displacement. So here, uh, in the triaxial test, we measure the, the force here, the vertical force during the shearing, and you measure the vertical displacement during the shearing. So this is the main difference from the triaxial test. So how do we prepare the specimen? So you take the sample from the field in undisturbed state, state, uh, status. So using the Shelby tube, you get the sample, and then you extrude the sample using the sample extruder and trim it, right? And place it in the triaxial cell. So it may be able to stand by yourself like this, if it has some cohesion intercell, does it have? Um, if it has some suction inside, then the, it can stand by itself. But if it's just you know powdery and uh, you know it just crumbles, then the, you can remold it to achieve the same density or the void ratio with the field condition. So then you jacket it with the rubber membrane, and you put the O-ring inside and outside to perfectly separate the pore fluid within the membrane and assemble the cell. And then you can fill the water to apply the uh, confining stress later. So then this is loaded in the loading frame. Here you apply the confining stress by pressurizing the, the fluid inside the filling this cell. And proving ring to measure the deviator load and dial gauges to measure the vertical displacement. And this is the, uh, this picture shows the old equipment, but these data there, these are all digitalized. So computer will load the data. So when we categorize the types of triaxial test, there are four types, actually three types of triaxial test. 
according to the procedure, how you prepare and shear the specimen. So first, when you apply the confining stress, so this is the stage one or step one, so confinement stage, uh, confinement step, you can allow the water drainage. So when you increase the confining stress, the, if it's the clay, then the clay will consolidate, uh, con will be consolidated, right? So then because the delta, uh, no, sigma C is applied and the, the initial excess pore pressure will go up by this sigma C and this initial excess pore pressure needs to be drained and dissipated. So then you can allow the water drainage right, by opening the valve or not. So if you open the valve and allow the drainage, then it's called a consolidated sample. If you don't, it's unconsolidated sample. And, and then in the second stage is the application of deviator stress, delta sigma, right? But then when you apply the delta sigma, so during your shearing, you can also choose either opening the valve, so letting the water drains out, or you can close the valve, so letting the pore pressure builds up or you know, cause the negative huh? anyway. Huh? So uh, if you let drain, if you allow the drainage, then it's called the drained loading. If you don't allow the drainage, then it's called the undrained loading. So in the undrained loading, no water or the pore fluid cannot exit or enter from the outside. So no, the volume will be conserved. So then step one, consolidated or unconsolidated, and step two, drained or undrained, depending on the uh, whether the drainage is allowed or not. And if you perform the drained loading test with the consolidated sample, and it's called a CD test. Okay. And if you perform, if you apply the undrained loading, with the consolidated sample, then it's called a CU test. So consolidated undrained loading test, undrained pressure test. And if you perform undrained loading, apply the undrained loading on an unconsolidated sample, and it's called a UU test. So there are these three types of pressure tests with respect to the drainage condition. So let's look at the CD test first, how we perform and analyze the data. It's called a consolidated drained test. And here, in, let's look at the stage one during the uh, confining stage or confinement stage, you apply the vertical stress, right? Actually, this should be the same with the vertical stress. And pore pressure will be zero. So the confining, the vertical effective stress is the same with the vertical total stress. And horizontal effective stress will be the same with the horizontal total stress because pore pressure is zero. So the, um, this one here, the center column shows the pore pressure. And during the actual stress increase, so during the delta sigma, the deviatrix stress is applied. And this delta sigma is applied and the drainage is still allowed. So there will be no excess pore pressure accumulated. So then um, total stress is the same with the effective stress. Here, the in radial direction is the same. So in this case, major principal stress is the vertical stress, and major effective stress is the same with the major total principal stress. Um, here, the minor principal stress is the same, either it's the uh, total stress term or the effective stress term. A failure, now that you apply the uh, delta sigma F, which is the deviatric stress at the failure that caused the failure of the specimen, 
excess pole pressure is still the zero, so that you no know, total stress analysis or effective stress analysis will give you the same result. So then at failure, um, you have sigma one, which is the vertical stress, and you have sigma three, which is the radial stress. What about the volume change um, during the consolidation stage, which is the first step before you apply the DVH reloading? Um, because the water can be drained, the volume will shrink. So the volume change shows the negative value, which indicates the compression or the contraction of the soil specimen. And stress strain relationships. So during the shearing, so after the first stage, which is the consolidation stage, when the consolidation stage is completed, and then you now move into the, uh, the second stage, which is the deviator stress application or the increment. And then with the actual shear strain increasing, the vertical force resisting this uh, strain will also increase. So the total, uh, if you divide the force with the area, then, then you get the deviator stress and deviator stress increases with the increasing actual strain. Um, if the soil is dense sand or OC clay, it will show a post peak behavior and strain softening behavior. So it will show some peak like this. And because it will dilate I think if you remember the direction test and volume change concept, right? And when you shear it, the particle will climb up, right? To the, uh, the next particle so that the volume will increase by this much, right? So then volume change will show an increase with the shearing. But in the loose sand, it doesn't show any peak and uh, it shows the strain hardening behavior. And as you can expect, it will contract with shearing because when you think about this kind of a simple cubic packing system, when it's loose and it's gonna find a better place a grain will find a better place to resist the applied force and to be compacted more. So these two contradictory or contrasting volume change behavior is very uh, unique and uh, important to note. And see the test and how to determine the shear strength parameter C and P. So, In the in the first first test run, you fail the specimen under the confining stress of sigma three a. Then sigma three a is applied here, and you can also you will know the uh, DVH stress at the failure, which is delta sigma d f. Then summation of confining stress and the delta sigma d f will give you the major principal stress. And using this and sigma one and sigma three, you can plot the plot a mole circle in a sigma and tau space. And if you perform a repeat the task at a different confined stress level, sigma three b, then you can also draw another circle. Maybe one more time, you can draw another circle. Then if you find a line that's tangent to these three circle, then it will give you a Coulomb failure envelope and the angle of this Coulomb failure en envelope, which is the lean, the just straight line, then it will give you the friction angle. Okay. And here the important thing to note is that the sigma one minus sigma three is this DVH stress and that's the size of the circle, size of the Mohr circle. So strength parameters C and V can be obtained from consolidated drain test, CD test. And uh, because the excess pole pressure is zero in drain test, um, you can assume 
and the, you uh, know that's uh, straightforward that the total stress and the effective stress are the same. And therefore, the C and C prime, or phi and phi prime, are not different. And here, to denote the, uh, the C and phi obtained from CV, we sometimes use the uh, subscri subscription called D here. So CD, when you see this symbol, CD and phi D in the textbook, then uh, you can think that these are from the trained test. Okay, um, then the, if you have a sand or NC normally consolidated clay, uh, these two soils are typically um, doesn't have the cohesion intercept. So always the, uh, the Y axis, the Y intercept is zero. So then just one circle can give you the uh, failure envelope. So one CD test will be sufficient to determine the VD because the cohesion intercept CD is zero. But if the CD is not zero, um, which is the case for the overly consolidated clay or cemented sand, then you have to find the friction angle and the C together. So you need more than one test to find the uh, tangent line of this uh, orange line. Um, practical application of CD analysis. So if we get the CD and the PD, where do we use for the design? When the embankment constructed very slowly in layers over a soft clay deposit, then we can use the CD like this. Because um, remember this CD test gives you the strength under a drained loading condition. Drain loading condition means that the, uh, the fuel condition that doesn't generate any excess pull pressure. So excess pull pressure should be zero. So if the loading is slow enough so that the excess pull pressure e generation is minimal, then you can use the shear strength parameter determined from the CD test. But if the loading is really fast, for example, like, um, so you're building, the one case, you're building a 10-story 10 10 story building in a month. And the other extreme case is that you have a 10-story building built over 10 years. So the latter case, you can assume that it's a drained case, right? You know, literally, or the you know, metamor uh, just saying that. And uh, the former case, because it's built very fast, it doesn't have the time to um, dissipate the excess pull pressure enough. So then the, it will be undrained loading, which will be the different case that we're gonna talk in soon in minutes. Our staying with the steady state CPG means that the uh, uh, steady state, the water CPG is steady state, so it doesn't cause any excess on uh, dramatic excess pull pressure generation. So then you can use the drain shear strength. And when you have an excavation of the net, excavation of the natural slope in clay, then the excavation will cause the stress removal so that it doesn't generate the positive excess pull pressure. So then you can use the CD analysis. And the uh, natural slope also, you know, it moves very slowly as long as um, we are not considering the uh, extreme rainfall, then the, it's safe to use the CD um, test and the uh, C and V from the drained loading test. So here the CD test simulates the long-term condition in the field. Thus, the CD and the VD should be used to evaluate the long-term behavior of soils. Okay, um, next one is the CU test, consolidated and undrained test. So in this case, in the first stage, we consolidate the sample with the drainage allowed. So in this case, excess pore pressure will be zero, right? So total stress is the same with the excess pull pressure. I oh, know, sorry, the effective stress because the uh, UEX is zero. 
we allow the consolidation happening uh, with the uh, water drainage allowed. And during the uh, deviatric stress application, we close the valve so that the pore water or the pore fluid cannot escape or yeah, can I escape or the out from the outside any fluid cannot go in. So then you develop either the positive excess pore pressure or negative excess pore pressure depending on the denseness of the soil. If the soil wants to dilate, then it will create a negative excess pore pressure. And if the soil wants to contract during shearing, then it will uh, develop the positive excess pore pressure. So depending on this excess pore pressure, if you subtract this one from the uh, total stress, then you can get the effective stress. At failure, so you're going to increase the deviatric loading until soil fails. And then at the failure moment, you can also measure the excess pore pressure developed. Then you will be able to compute the effective stress vertical direction and radial direction at failure. What about the volume change? During the consolidation, the first stage, um, you're allowing the water drainage. So you can measure the volume change by looking at the level of the water at the burette or the gravity cylinder. But during the shearing, because you close the well and there's no water mass coming in and out, so that the volume is preserved. So instead of the volume change, volume change will be zero during the under loading, but you can also measure, but you, instead you can measure the pore pressure change. So if it's the dense sand, you have a peak like this developed, and then it goes down. So it's a post-peak behavior, post-peak softening and strain softening behavior, but uh, pore water pressure will change with the shearing and it will go negative value. So negative excess pore pressure means that the pore water pressure decreases, right? So then that means that the volume wants to expand, but there's no water coming in to withdraw or suck it from the outside. So the pressure will go down. But in the loose sand, I think if you uh, remember what happened with the loose sand when you share it, loose sand wants to contract, right? The volume will try to contract. So the pore pressure will increase because the water cannot escape during the shearing. So then um, you have a total stress at failure, sigma one and sigma three. Sigma three will be the confining stress and sigma one is the confining stress plus the deviatric stress and you can also measure uh, during, using this sigma one and sigma three, you can plot the Mohr circle in total stress term. Then with the different location, so then how to determine the strength parameter C and V from the CU test. So from the confined stress, you know the sigma three, and uh, you also know the sigma one from the deviatric stress at the failure. And then you can draw more circle, and you can perform another test at a different level of confined stress, sigma three B. Then you can draw the other circle with the bigger diameter. So then, so as the, uh, with the combined, increasing combined stress, the deviated stress, the maximum value will increase. So the size of the circle will increase too. So then if you find a line that uh, is tangent to these two circles, then you can get the friction angle and the cohesion intercept C. Um, here, um, the subscription here um, is uh, written as CU, so that indicate that indicates that uh, these values are from the CU test, consolidating on drain loading test, and you can see that the, it's from the total stress. So the more column failure envelope is drawn in terms of the total stress. Um, then 
you can also use the effective stress at failure because you are measuring the pole pressure at the failure. So if you can subtract the pole pressure UF at the failure, then it's going to be, um, it will draw a different curve and different circles, right? So then if you find the line that's tangent to this more circle drawn in terms of the effective stress, then also it will give you the different strength parameter C and V. So from the CU test, strength parameters C and V can be obtained. And uh, you can get the parameters in terms of the total stresses, C, CU, and the V, CU. And if you subtract and consider the excess pole pressure generated at the failure, then you will get the C V and the uh, C prime and the V prime. And actually, because you are subtracting the excess pole pressure, um, the obtained strength parameters C prime and V prime will be the same with the C D and the V D, which are obtained from the drained test. So then, um, what will be the difference between the phi cu and the phi prime so that's respectively getting from the undrained loading and from the total stress and the effective stress because the uh, if the effective stress you know, the, if the positive pore pressure is developed for the loose sand or nc clay because the soil try to contract the positive pore pressure will develop then the, if you subject the positive excess pole pressure from the total stress, then the stress value will decrease so that the full circle will move towards the left side. So then the phi is generally greater than the phi CU. Okay. So the, if the um, cohesion intercept is zero, then the one CU test will be sufficient to determine the phi Cu and the uh, phi prime of the sand on NC clay. Um, so then the, what's the practical applications? Um, if the embankment is constructed rapidly over a soft clay deposit, then in the clay, pore pressure will increase, but there's no time for water to escape. Right? So you still have the excess pole pressure accumulating and then there will be a total stress increment at the top, right, going up. So then you'll have a failure through the undrained loading, by the undrained loading. And one of the rapid drawdown behind the earth stem. So if the water table goes down, then what happened to the total stress and effective stress here? Right, or here. So before it was here, so that excess pole pressure is, you no, know, the pole pressure is, uh, you know, by the water depth this much. Then if the water table goes down, then here, effective stress applied by this weight of soil is significantly increased. Huh? So because of the weight that then um, you can develop the failure in the, the slope of the dam. Um, and also the rapid construction of an embankment of a natural slope. So by the weight of the embankment on a natural slope, you can develop or uh, cause the failure. And when the shear stress exceeds the undrained shear strength. So total stress parameters from the CU test, CCU and the PCU can be used for stability problems of air. So it becomes fully consolidated and are at equilibrium with the existing stress state. And then for some reason, additional stresses are applied quickly with no drainage occurring. Okay, so then the last test type is the UU, unconsolidated undrained test. Uh, so when you take the sample from the field, Immediately after the sample, the 
quantifying stress is zero, right? So for example, if you take the sample from 10 meter deep, it was about 100 kilopascal confined stress, but as soon as you bring it to the uh, atmosphere or the ground surface, then the confined stress is gone. So that the stress here is all zero. And when you apply the hydrostatic cell pressure, you don't allow the uh, drainage. So sigma three will develop no, the sigma-3 and sigma-3, the so confined stress will increase, but it will be uh, taken by the water. So delta UC, which is the excess pore pressure caused by this confined stress, this will go up. So then effective stress sigma-3 prime will be total stress minus this delta UC. And if the B is 1, then the there will be no effective stress applied. And B is called the Scampton pore water pressure parameters. If the soil is fully saturated, then the B will be one. So immediately after the sampling, you have minus UR. So, um, so when just before the sampling, the soil was under a certain depth under the groundwater table, so you should have the water pressure. And when you take it out, the confined stress is gone, and the pore pressure is now with the atmospheric pressure, so that it becomes the uh, negative value, so suction, when you look at the change in pore pressure. So then you apply the hydrostatic cell pressure, then it will add up to the pore pressure. And during the load, um, delta sigma is applied. And also the because of delta sigma, you have a delta U developed. If excess pore pressure will increase or decrease. And that failure is the same. So then at the failure stage, you measuring the uh, excess pore pressure at the failure. And uh, you you know you be know the you you know the this delta sigma f deviated to stress and also the applied confined stress sigma three. From that, you can draw the mole circle. And here, because the confined stress is canceled each other, canceled here at the vertical and the, the horizontal, so the mole circle in terms of the effective stresses do not depend on the cell pressure. Therefore, we get only one mole circle in terms of the effective stress for different cell pressure. So the reason is that um, when you apply the sigma C of 100 kilopascal, then delta, no, here the minus UR plus sigma C will be also plus 100 kilopascal. And it cancels out later. And if you apply confined stress of 200 kilopascal, doesn't matter because it cancels out again. So then the size, it means that the size of the mole circle is the same, even though you apply the higher confined stress. So then the size of the mole circle will be constant, and but the sigma one or the sigma three just moves around no? left and right, depending on the, the level of the confined stress. So then uh, when you draw a line, in the UU test, unconsolidated on drain test, you always end up with the uh, phi U, the friction angle, zero degree. It will be just a straight and horizontal line. But you have a CU, the, um, which is the uh, cohesion intercept from the on-drain loading, uh, can be found, can be obtained. Um, okay, we can skip this one. And uh, same with the CU test, UU, uh, practical applications of the UU analysis is pretty much the same. So embankment construction rapidly over a soft clay deposit. So there is no time for the consolidation here. And large earth stem constructed rapidly with no change in water content of the soft clay. And footing plate rapidly on a clay deposit. And UU test simulates the short term condition in the field Thus, the CU can be used to analyze the short-term behavior of the soil. So drain loading and undrain loading. And in the undrain loading, you have a CU test and the UU test. Okay, um, the last one, but the very simple one is the unconfined compression test. 
this case, we don't apply the radio confining stress. So here, sigma 3 is 0. Uh, you can use this UC test for the samples that can stand alone, like the, the dry clay or concrete. Then, because the sigma 3 is 0, always the more circles start at, uh, from the origin here. Right? From here. And then um, the size, when you fail the specimen, then you have the this sigma 1, the vertical stress at failure. And this will determine the size of the circle. And uh, when you can find the diameter of the circle, then half of it will be the undrained uh, strength. So tau f will be half of the sigma 1 at failure. And that's called the CU. I think the, yep. It's, so, sorry, this, the, this should be CU. And this is the QU. OK. Um, yep, this was the, this was the KAIST campus, main campus. And thank you for your attention. Enjoy your summer. <laughs>